Oh, hey guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do cleanup. Because uh, in the previous tutorial, I drew this uh, log here. And it needs, some, it needs some love. It's not looking so good. So this might be a longer tutorial than usual. Feel free to skip it. It's uh, going to be a little tedious. Cleanup tends to be tedious. So just bear with me. We'll see how we, uh, we can do on this log. All right. So, one way to do cleanup that actually I really prefer is to just create a new layer. So I've already got a layer here. Remember, you can create a layer by this guy down here. You're going to want to lock the layers behind so that you can edit freely. And then with the line tool selected, that's N, I can come in here and I can kind of lay down my lines. Notice that it's going to snap to log, which is on that other layer. And here I'll change this line color so that you can see it a little better. Yeah, that's probably better. So I can come up here and I can kind of add my curves. I'm going to do something like this. The style that you want to clean it up varies, of course, but Flash lends itself to very graphic shapes, which is definitely the beauty of it. Looks like we got a garbage truck coming. Okay, so the garbage truck has just left. So we can record now. So you'll notice as I'm moving around these lines, they're snapping to corners, which makes it really handy for this process to work. So I can take this guy up here, I can do all kinds of fun stuff. Now before I add a shadow shape that, oh dear, that must not be touching. I noticed over here, if you zoom in, you'll see that these two are not touching. This happens all the time. So what you can do is you can grab that and make sure that they're touching. And then connect that too. So on this edge that I'm planning to bend out like so, I don't want to do a line that's touching it, because then when I try to bend it out, it'll only bend out part of it. So I have to kind of strategize which lines I'm going to bend. So I'll bend that guy there and there, and delete that. Now the reason why I'm using this tool instead of just the regular uh, pencil tool is because I like this kind of chunkiness that you can get on some of these lines. Yeah, that works. Alright. Curve that up there. Alright. I'll bend this out. And I'll show you what I mean by chunkiness in a second. It's easier to illustrate when I hide this other layer. So hide the wood. Hide the flame. So rather than just having a straight curve on some of these, oh my gosh the diesel truck. <laughs> uh, this is not my morning. It is just not my morning for recording there was a diesel truck in the alleyway. Okay, so he's gone, and the window's closed. So hopefully there will be no further interruptions. All right, so like I was saying, um, rather than just doing like a curved line like this, if I do break it up like this, then it creates this kind of nice like point where the direction transitions, which gives it a feeling of uh, extra shapiness. I guess that's like an artistic term, right? So anyway, so I've got this shape going on. And I'm going to bring in my shadow here. And I'm only loosely thinking about the forms, but I do think about them sometimes. Like, for example, if this were to curve down here, right, it would continue like so. And then this guy would come like so. 
and then maybe it zigzags back because zigzags are cool. Delete that, delete that, and then hide that. And so I've got my piece of move going. That curve makes more sense, like that. So I've got these awesome shapes. And if I want this line here to be straight, it's really easy. I can just click on the corner and it'll snap into a position so that it's straight. This isn't quite making sense. If you look at the patterning of fills, you got the same color here and here. So I'm not entirely sure what I was thinking when I did that. So I'll probably delete that. Yeah, it makes more sense. And this guy, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. Maybe it's something more like this. And I can delete these. And I can move this here and delete these. And delete that. And do that. I'm kind of finding my shapes. I wish I could say I just nailed it on the first time. I'm not that kind of artist. I kind of have to fiddle around with it until it works. Yeah, maybe that's also... I officially hate it. It's awful. It's not as awful, but still pretty. Is this like a broken piece of wood? I guess I'm I guess I'm gonna make it a broken piece of wood. That's probably what's gonna have to happen here for this to make any sense at all. So if this is a face of broken wood, then it's gonna have some curves like this. And it's gonna become gonna do a thing. You know what? I'm overthinking it. Let's get some color in there. Alright, so I got my basic shapes. With some color, I can now kind of discern what is going on. What's going on? So this guy is overcomplicated now, and we can drag this point over here and delete that. Put it back where it was, put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Alright, I like it. That is a stylized piece of wood. So the next step. <clears throat> The next step is to put some gradients on this bad boy. Gradients are a funny thing because they have a whole different tool set. So if I want to fill with a gradient in Photoshop, you've got a gradient fill tool. In Flash, you have no such thing. You select your gradient by coming up here to solid color and saying radial gradient. Another way would be to come in here and select one of these preset gradients down here, which will also set this to radial gradient. Uh, okay, I can also do linear gradient. I'm going to use linear gradient because it's more fitting for the situation. So I'm going to select that guy for the dark color and that guy for the light color just to so get me started. You always want to turn off lock fill when you're first filling. I don't know, okay. So like, if it's turned on, and you just click, then um, results are mixed. You don't know what you're gonna get. But if you turn it off, and then you can drag and click, and the color at the left 
is the one that you're dragging to. The color at the right is the one that you start the drag from. Me personally, I think it should be opposite, but I think Adobe has more important things to do than fix it for me. Okay, so you've got the gradient transform tool, which is F. So I have that mapped to my hotkeys. It's by default it's set to F, but I have it also on my uh, gamepad thing. So it looks like this, and when you click on a gradient, you get the gradient controls. You can scale your gradient here, and you can rotate it here, and you can move the center of it here. So I'm going to move this thing around, around town, until it looks perfect. Yeah, it's probably too late. So if I come over here and just edit my gradient by saying, uh, I want this color and then, oh geez. Okay, so notice that it's changing up here when I click these two colors. I can either double click on this guy and then go into here and select the color here. So I'm darker, more saturated. So say okay. Notice that it did not change my gradient out here. That's because that fill, that object was not selected. So if I um, if I select it, it changes back to the gradient that it actually is. If I deselect it, it changes to my new gradient that I have color picked. If I do paint fill, fill, it breaks. Because remember, I have the lock fill checked. And the diesel truck is back, but I don't care. I'm just going to keep recording. <laughs> um, so hit undo. Uncheck the lock fill. And if you just tap it once, it will keep the same transformation that you had before on your gradient. But it will update it with new colors, which is pretty cool. If you tap it again, it will break. So only tap it once. Capiche? Capiche. Okay, so now notice, if I tap this guy, because it's a different fill, it has different transforms. If I want this guy to have the same ones as the other, then all I gotta do is I drop the other one. It turns on that lock fill for me, so nice. In this case, I actually want to use it. And then when I tap on this guy, it keeps these two connected. Now I'm realizing that my highlight color is too light. So I can leave this selected. And when I make edits over here, it'll update that guy. It's kind of handy. So I'm going to want a darker, desaturated color. Oh, but I liked that color. Here's what I'll do. I'll create a new color in the middle, tapping there. So that'll hold this band here intact, and then I can click on this highlight and uh, it's not doing it. So I need another color holding in place, and then I can make the highlight change. And apparently, apparently, it's not changing this guy because it's not selected. But that's okay. I can eye drop again, paint fill again, then it'll do my bidding. So now I've got this top guy selected. It's too dark, too desaturated. Look at the blue. Yeah, that's what I want. Right there. Beautiful. All right, so I have now um, tidied up this piece of wood. It's a very stylized piece of wood. I can probably make some more changes here, but you get the general idea. You can just keep editing and tweaking until it looks exactly how you would like. And that's a little bit on the technique that I use for cleaning up some of my rough artwork and making it look better. Hope you learned something.